which is a big bang, this universe sprung into existence and the energy was condensed into hydrogen atoms. That was more than 13 billion years ago. It's fascinating to see how these hydrogen atoms go through numerous transformations, star explosions and nuclear fusion reactions until they reach a point where they can photograph themselves. Yes, we are all descendants of those primordial hydrogen atoms. We are all made of stardust. So in a way, all of these stars, galaxies, planets, nebulae are our siblings. And astrophotography and astronomy is our way of knowing to get to know our siblings a bit better. Hello everyone, my name is Prathmesh Jaju and today I want to share my journey of capturing the light of astronomical objects. Art of Astrophotography I'm an amateur astronomer and astrophotographer from Pune. I've been fascinated by the wonders of our universe ever since I was eight years old. My father used to, uh, my father used to show me all of these space shows and movies like Star Trek and Star Wars that got me hooked into space and astronomy. To learn more about astronomy, I joined an astronomy club in Pune, which is India's oldest association for amateur astronomers. To learn more about astronomy, I participated in different events like stargazing sessions and I learned how to operate a telescope. I've been taking photos of the night sky with the help of telescopes and camera ever since I was 12 years old. And since then, I've been trying my best to improve my photos and make them look better. The universe is so vast beyond our imagination that even the celestial bodies are so far away from each other that we can't even comprehend that. So even light, the fastest object known to us, travels at a speed of 3 lakh kilometers per second. But even light takes hundreds and thousands of years to reach from one particular object to another. For instance, let's take Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to our sun. It's 4.2 light years away from us. When light is coming from Proxima Centauri, it is taking 4.2 years to reach us. So we are looking at it how it looked like 4.2 uh, years ago. So in a way, we are looking at Proxima Centauri in the past. So this brings forward the concept of the telescope as a time machine. Any, any astronomical object that we uh, observe from a telescope is basically like we are traveling back in time. We are, see, we are essentially seeing them how they existed in the past. The farther away the object is, the farther back in time we are looking. So that's an interesting concept and that intrigues me because in a way we can time travel with the help of telescopes and cameras and we can take a snapshot of the past with the help of astrophotography. So now I would like to talk about the sheer vastness of the, in, uh, of the universe that I talked about. Now we'll talk about the sizes. There are millions of celestial bodies that are thousands and thousands of times bigger than the sun, earth, moon and us humans. And if we gaze into the infinite sky during the night, we should be humbled that our planet even exists. And between all of these vast, uh, between all of these crazy huge things, here we are on a tiny little rock. And on top of that, from Pune or anywhere in the world, I set up my telescope and with the help of a small DSLR camera, I'm able to capture the beauty and nature of beautiful nebulae, galaxies, star clusters and that's just very intriguing and fascinating to me. Now I would like to show you a few of my images and a few stories along with it. The first image, this is from the Himalayas in Spiti Valley. So this was one of my very first images that I captured. I had no prior knowledge of astrophotography. I just took a DSLR camera with me, which was a friend. And so the best thing was that I forgot, forgot the tripod at the airport. So I had no means of steadiness uh, in the Himalayas. 
So when we went there, I set up the camera and everything. I kept the camera on a rock so it would be steady. I elevated it with, uh, to an angle with the help of a book and aligned it to the Milky Way. And once I aligned, focused and everything, I started taking photos of the night sky. And that was the first time that I ever felt different from everything. I saw the Milky Way galaxy with my own eyes and that was just mind-blowing for me. And this is an image of that. It was just pure beauty and I know my eye, eyes couldn't see that but this is what the camera resolved. And okay. So in 2021 I captured an image of the moon which, for which I gained recognition and this is one of the images. So it is a composite of around 55,000 frames. So what I, uh, what I did for that image is basically imagine the complete image like a jigsaw puzzle. We have divided the whole image into 38 pieces and, and a telescope. We have zoomed into the moon so much that I can see only a small portion of it. Now, when I see a small portion of it, I take a video of it. Videos are nothing but thousands of pictures played in an order. And as the telescope is keeping the moon and all of the settings steady, I can capture multiple or thousands of frames in a video and that's a quicker process. So I started taking videos of the moon part by part, matching, uh, matching parts and uh, after around four to five hours, the whole moon was covered, the half phase was covered. And with the help of that, now I have 38 videos of around 100 gigabytes. These are completely raw videos. Then I started stacking them. So I took one video, I merged those frames. I merged those 15 to 2000 frames per video together and I got one single image. I did the same process for the other 37 videos as well. And once that was done, I sharpened them, I enhanced the details and colors. So now there are 38 pieces of jigsaw puzzle. Now all I needed to do was well, solve the jigsaw puzzle and stitch the pieces together. So once all of that was done, 38 hours later, there was that image. Then uh, I would like to show this, uh, uh, the different pieces of the moon that yeah. this was the half, uh, half moon during that time. So uh, over the years, I've captured a lot of moon, a lot of moon images, and honestly, I'm ahead with the moon. Now I would like to show you some deep sky images of the moon, and also some planets uh, that I've captured. So that's Venus and Mars. Uh, in 2020, Mars was at its closest approach towards Earth, and it was going to be the closest in till 2031. So that's an image of that. That's Venus and Jupiter and Saturn. So these were all captured from a highly light polluted city like Pune or Mumbai. Then this is a composite uh, of all the planets. Actually there's, I don't think you can see Neptune but it's in the corner. And so there was this rare phenomenon that uh, happened in 2021. Jupiter and Saturn were so close to each other that they appeared to be so close to each other that we, we could see them as one single star. But when observed from a telescope, it would look something magnificent like this. The, the two gas giants looked like in the same field. Okay. So this is another image of the Milky Way. And this is the Orion constellation. So when we look into the night sky, we see three stars in a line. It's during the winter season, we uh, almost every night we can see these three stars in a line. So if you can see there are those three stars in the middle. So that's the Orion constellation. And when we look with our eyes, we just see the stars and that's it. But when we keep capturing images of that particular area of the night sky, we see that there are a lot of hydrogen dust clouds, different types of nebulae hidden behind the stars. So this is uh, a zoomed in version of that. 
Okay. So nowadays, even smartphones have become so amazing that you can capture beautiful images of the Milky Way galaxy, or uh, you can capture star trails using smartphones. That's an example of that. So there's no limit, or there's so there's no limit to equipment that we should use when when it comes to capturing images of the night sky. Advancement in technology, astrophotography has become more accessible than ever. High-end equipment does produce stunning, uh, does make stunning images indeed. But uh, it isn't important to get started with high-end equipment. Even smartphone cameras and a basic DSLR camera can capture such beautiful images that I, we can't even imagine. <laughs> so a camera is basically just a device that registers light. But it's the person who is behind the camera who is shaping and toning the image to perfection. With the right knowledge and tools, you can produce a beautiful image of the night sky. And there's so much that we don't know about the night sky. Like, if I take a part of the, uh, if I take a part of the sky, and let's say I point the camera and the telescope towards it for let's say three days, three consecutive nights, and I process the data together, I'll see that there's a lot of dust and there's a lot of nebulae hidden behind it. So that's what happened with the Oran Nebula. If we take, so that was just a small part of the sky. If we cover the whole night sky, it's completely vibrant and beautiful. We just don't, we, we can't see it with our eyes. We need to bring it out with the help of cameras and telescopes. Uh, mobile phones have become so evolved that uh, there are shutter speed settings that you can uh, they are exactly as capable as a DSLR camera. So with just a mobile phone, you can travel to the one of the darkest skies and take beautiful images of the night sky. Okay. So, yeah. so that was done with the photos. And so now I would like to share a few experiences, a, bad, a few bad experiences that I faced uh, in the past two years. So in 2019, there was this rare phenomenon called as the annular solar eclipse. It was going to be visible from southern India. So our team went to southern India with all of our hope and excitement. We went there and so we traveled 2,000 kilometers, traveled with all of the equipment, telescopes, around 20, 20 25 telescopes. And we were divided in three teams. So one to the right, one to the middle, and one to the left. The left and the middle team saw the solar eclipse in its complete beauty. We waited for the solar eclipse. 10 minutes before the solar eclipse, it was completely clear. During the solar eclipse, as soon as the solar eclipse started, clouds started to roll in. Within 30 minutes, it was completely overcast. And around an hour after the solar eclipse, it was clear again. So it was our bad luck, I couldn't see the solar eclipse. And just like, that was when I realized that there was another solar eclipse, where it was going to be visible from northern part of the, uh, northern, northern part of the India. But then COVID came. So again, we couldn't see it. But we saw the partial solar, uh, solar eclipse from Pune, and that was still beautiful, but not as good as the annular solar eclipse. So uh, that was one of the, experiences. So, like I said, uh, there are many ups and downs in astrophotography as well, weather being the best, because uh, especially in Maharashtra, we get a lot of uh, monsoons. So mostly like five to six months of monsoon. In Pune now, uh, monsoons take up till November. So when there is free time, you should absolutely go out and take images of the night sky. It brings out a different connection towards the universe around us. It gives a different meaning to uh, what we think. And basically, it gives you a humble understanding that how small we are in this universe and how much there is that we can explore and learn about where we came from and where we are going. So that was all. Hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you so much.